Why are these Russian soldiers unloading nuclear warheads in Crimea? And how is it connected to the explosion of a bridge in Crimea on October 8, 2022 that Vladimir Putin himself visited after it was almost blown to pieces? The key words here aren't explosions or bombs, it's Crimea and Russia. But what makes this peninsula in the Black Sea so important to Putin? And what would happen if they lose it? Could it even mean the end of Russia? Since Russia annexed the Crimean Peninsula in 2014, it has worked hard to retain control of the territory through propaganda, coercion, and heavy military presence. But Ukraine's recent battlefield gains have led many to question whether it can retake Crimea, and if so, what such a loss would mean for the future of Russia. Nothing good, you can be sure about that. For years, Crimea has been an important part of Putin's agenda, and there are signs that the territory may soon become even more central to the war. Ukraine's October attack on the Kerch Strait Bridge, connecting Crimea to Russia, was an international embarrassment for Putin, and showed Crimea's lasting importance to both sides. Even American political scientist Charles Lipson recently noted that the coming fight for Crimea will be crucial to the war's outcome. What is it about Crimea? To Putin, the significance of Crimea is rooted in his narrative of the war, one which draws on Russia's imperial past and national identity, but which could ultimately prove to be his downfall. To understand why, we first need to take a look at Crimea's backstory, which is, as you may be expecting, not short on any amount of war-filled drama and Russian geopolitical manipulation. Despite Putin's claims that Crimea has always been a part of Russia, in reality, the peninsula was only under Russian control for 186 years prior to 2014, less than 6% of its total written history. This control began in 1783, when the rapidly growing Russian Empire invaded Crimea as part of its western expansion into the Mediterranean and Middle East. Russian Empress Catherine the Great aimed to create and rule over the new Byzantium, using Crimea as a stepping stone into the region. But this was just the beginning. The idea of conquering neighboring lands as a foothold and buffer zone between Russia and its enemies became a central aim of later imperial, Soviet, and Russian governments, one still reflected in Putin's foreign policy today. Everything seemed to be going great for the Russian Empire for a while, but there was a plot twist. Russia's imperial expansion was eventually cut short by the Crimean War of 1853-56, where it was defeated by the combined forces of the Ottoman Empire, France, and the United Kingdom. While this halted Russia's military expansion for a decade and a half and forced it to dismantle its naval base in Sevastopol, the empire was able to retain control of Crimea. But Russia wouldn't be stopped for long. With the Franco-Prussian War of 1870, Russia rebuilt the Sevastopol base and again tightened its control on the peninsula. During the next century of its rule there, think tank Catham House notes that Russia destroyed much of its indigenous Crimean Tatar population, since the Russian policy was one of forced displacement, colonization, and Russification to enshrine dominance. Throughout this period, Crimea also became critically important to Russia's national identity, cemented in the minds of many as a historical part of its territory. After Sevastopol was destroyed during World War II, Joseph Stalin even declared it a hero city and ordered it to be rebuilt as fast as possible. But this wasn't the end of Crimea's story. After Stalin's death, control of Crimea was transferred to Ukraine in 1954, mainly due to political calculations by new Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev and under the pretext of revitalizing the faltering Crimean economy. But the transfer didn't reduce the importance of Crimea in the Russian national identity, Ironically, the move was intended to bring Russia and Ukraine together against the West. Soviet official Kliment Voroshilov declared at the time that enemies of Russia had repeatedly tried to take the Crimean Peninsula from Russia and use it to steal and ravage Russian lands. He praised the joint battles by the Russian and Ukrainian peoples to keep Crimea in the Soviet and Russian sphere of influence. Talk about manipulative propaganda. But Crimea enjoyed some peaceful times too. After the fall of the USSR in 1991, it remained part of Ukraine, functioning as an autonomous zone. But a 1997 lease agreement also allowed Russia to maintain its Black Sea fleet in Sevastopol through 2042. This close strategic relationship remained in place for several decades. Here's where this joint custody situation gets interesting. Ukraine's government stayed subservient to and dependent on its larger neighbor, while Russia retained a large economic and military presence in Crimea, one of its only warm water ports. Most of Russia's major ports are located in the Arctic North, freezing over and becoming unusable during winter. 
Because of this, Putin has long viewed the Crimean Peninsula as vital for his modern security strategy. An analysis from the RAND Corporation explains that Crimea provides a two-echelon outer layer of defense against an air attack emanating from the eastern Mediterranean. And if Russia's coastal defense brigades perform as designed in a contested environment, they pose a significant threat to enemy maritime forces within range. Because Russia lacks the military capabilities to project power around the world, its government is forced to focus on controlling smaller areas which give it the biggest geopolitical advantages. Crimea is among the most important of these areas, due to its favorable weather and close proximity to Russia, Central Asia, Europe, and the Middle East. Hence Putin's reaction to what came next. In 2014, Ukraine's Euromaidan movement severely undermined Russian control of Crimea. As protests forced out pro-Russian President Viktor Yakunovych and Ukrainians sought closer ties with the West, seeing his influence faltering, terrified Putin moved to illegally annex the Crimean Peninsula into Russia, codifying it with a referendum held at gunpoint. This rapid violent takeover shocked the international community, even as Western countries largely stood by and allowed the annexation to take place without consequences. It highlighted both a wariness about open conflict with Russia and just how important holding on to Crimea was and is to the country's leaders. In a statement justifying his land grab, Putin claimed that Crimea is as dear to Russians as the Temple Mount in Jerusalem is to Jews and Muslims. Exactly how likely is it that good old Vladimir was genuinely worried about the spiritual well-being of his people and not trying to gain power and control over the West? You can be the judge of that, but here's what happened next as a result of his actions. By re-elevating the territory's importance in this way, Putin and his regime were able to make it a central element of their plan to recollect Russia's historical territories, a plan which would eventually lead to the full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022. Because of Crimea's symbolic and strategic importance, it may soon be central to how the current phase of the war in Ukraine ends. As Lipson puts it, Russians consider it part of their national identity and essential to their status as a naval power. Losing it would damn Putin politically and almost certainly personally. He won't be retiring peacefully to a palace on the Black Sea or setting up a lobbying firm in Moscow. He'll be fitted for a coffin, and he knows it. If Putin loses control of the Crimean Peninsula, he could be discredited in the eyes of his most ardent supporters. This is particularly important with hardliners like Yevgeny Prigozhin, head of the Wagner military group. One scholar from the Carnegie Endowment has pointed out that Prigozhin is behaving like a parallel government and that he may be able to compete for power, if not under Putin, then after him. Pressure from powerful actors like this, combined with a year of military failure, has upped the stakes for Putin. And because he has invested so much into holding on to Crimea, Putin may be willing to do anything in his power to keep it. So should Ukraine push onwards towards Crimea? And would the loss really destroy Russia? Analysts and policymakers remain divided on whether Ukraine can realistically retake Crimea and what Putin's reaction might be. Several conflict analyses have found substantial evidence that Crimea is likely far more vulnerable than many assume, and that given the chance, Ukraine should attempt to retake the peninsula this year. Doing so would not be simple, and would almost certainly involve a large-scale siege of Crimea by Ukrainian forces. They would first need to fully destroy the Kerch Bridge and launch an attack to block the Northern Land Corridor from Donetsk, cutting Crimea off from Russia's supply lines. Combined with the destruction of Russian air defenses and artillery, such a siege could make a ground invasion of Crimea by Ukraine much easier. At least some Russian forces trapped on the peninsula would likely surrender, especially as food shortages increase. In turn, it is possible that such a development could demoralize Russian soldiers elsewhere potentially causing mutinies and further desertion. Some conclude that such a loss is the only solution to the war, as it would contain Putin's military ambitions and shatter Russians' confidence in their incompetent Putin. The retaking of Crimea was a great source of pride and their faith and confidence in him. Doing so could counter Putin's propaganda and make it clear to the majority of Russians that the war is lost. These experts have argued that public discontent with losing wars has led to revolution in Russia before, and that it may do so again if Crimea is retaken by Ukrainian forces. Yet others are far more cautious about the possibility, urging Ukraine not to try and retake Crimea, fearing the reaction it might lead to. Former US Defense Secretary Robert Gates recently told the Washington Post that losing Crimea would be a real red line for Putin, potentially leading to major escalation. Others like Lipson have echoed those fears, particularly as they relate to the possible use of nuclear weapons. 
As he puts it, therein lies the greatest danger for Ukraine in the West. Faced with military defeat and personal catastrophe, Putin would be tempted to set the four horsemen of the apocalypse on his foreign adversaries. The possibility of Putin using a tactical nuclear weapon in response to losing Crimea is certainly a terrifying one. But just how real is that threat? At the moment, US officials consider it relatively low, as the use of even a small nuclear weapon would have enormous blowback on Russia. White House spokesperson John Kirby said several weeks ago that we don't have any indication that Mr. Putin has any intention to use nuclear weapons, tactical or otherwise. But this could change quickly if Putin feels the walls closing in and his grip on power slipping away. Therefore, many officials have urged Ukraine to be cautious about attacking Crimea. This may lead to a rift between Ukraine and some in the West, as Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has stated that they would liberate the area of independent Ukraine as it was since 1991, as it will always be. This vision includes Crimea, potentially setting the stage for a major new phase of the conflict this year. However it plays out, there is no question that if Putin loses control of Crimea, it will be a crushing blow to his rule. Over the centuries, the peninsula has come to be perceived as a key part of Russia's national identity and geopolitical strategy, one which Russia's leader knows he can't afford to surrender. From Catherine the Great to Nikita Khrushchev to Putin himself, Crimea has remained at the center of Russia's global ambitions. But after nearly a year of war in Ukraine and hundreds of thousands of deaths, there seems to be little chance of a reverse course or ceasefire in the near future. But let us know what you think. Can Ukraine retake Crimea? Should it? And even if it does, will Putin be forced from power, or will he resort to the nuclear option to stay in office? Give us your thoughts in the comments section below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more analysis from military experts.